In this video, we show you how to configure an IO Link master port with an Ethernet IP capable PLC to use device validation and data storage. By activating this function, the IO Link device is automatically checked and parameterized by the IO Link master. We use the same setup as in the How to IO Link integration video. Only the IO Link sensor connected to port 1 of the master has been replaced by a PN3071 pressure sensor. As shown in the programming software Studio 5000 Logics Designer, the current sensor data is transferred to the Allen Bradley PLC, which is connected to the IO Link Master via Ethernet IP. If you have any questions up to this point, please have a look at the IO Link integration video. To configure an IO Link port, we have to change some parameters of the master. These can be found in the so called controller tags. To be able to make changes here, we must first take the IO Link Master out of the running process. To do this, we right click on the IO Link Master and select its properties. Under Connection, we now have the option of activating Inhibit Module. This option allows changes to be made to the IO Link Master without the need to stop or interrupt the PLC and other processes. All parameter changes are transferred directly to the master. Once the configuration is complete, all we have to do is uninhibit the module, and the IO link master is integrated back into the running process of the PLC. Let's take a closer look at the controller tags of the AL1120 IO link master. As we can see, the master data is stored in a certain structure. Master AL1120 with the ending C represents the configuration, the master with the ending I represents the inputs, and the master with the ending O represents the output data structure of the master. Since we want to set the function of port number one, we therefore select the configuration data. As we can see, there are various parameters for each port that already contain preset values. To activate device validation and data storage, we need to set the parameters port mode, validation, and data storage and the vendor and device ID. The other parameters are preset and can be used as they are. Let's take a look at an extract from the operating instructions for the IO Link Master to explain the meaning of the values for the parameters to be set. To do this, we go to the IFM homepage and use the search function to find the online datasheet for the AL1120 IO Link Master. Select the download area and scroll down to the operating instructions. Under point 9.2.5, Configure IO Link Ports, we find an explanation of the available options. The parameter Port Mode contains the value 3. This means that the port operates as an IO Link port. We can accept the value as it is and proceed with the parameter Validation and Data Storage. The parameter Validation Data Storage port contains the value 0, which means that there is no device validation. The master can therefore read any I.O. link device that follows the I.O. link standard. For more details, let's take another look at the operating instructions under point 9.1.8, I.O. link ports set device validation and data storage. The first option, no check and clear, or, as it is called in the software, no validation allows any I.O. link device to be connected to the port and read. This means that there is no device check and no data storage. The next two options, type compatible device, can be used to check that the correct sensor is connected. This can be done with the new 1.1 standard and even with the first I.O. link standard 1.0. Only the device type is checked without any kind of data storage. The validation check for the new I.O. link standard 1.1 can be extended by the data storage options Restore or Backup and Restore. The Restore function saves a parameter set once and automatically transfers it to a new device with factory settings. The Backup and Restore function also saves any parameter changes made in the meantime. As soon as a new device with factory settings is connected, the saved parameter set is transmitted. For this demonstration, we want to use the Backup and Restore function. To enable this, we need to write the value 3 to the relevant parameter. We also need to enter the vendor and device ID of the sensor 
we are using in the two parameters below. This ID is used by the controller to perform a device validation to see if the correct sensor is connected. The information can be found in the IODD file for the PN3071 pressure sensor we are using. Once again, we use the search function on the IFM homepage to access the online datasheet or download area of the device. We find the vendor ID 310 for IFM and the device ID 428 for the PN3071 pressure sensor on the first page of the IODD file. We enter both values for the vendor and device ID parameters into the corresponding parameters. This allows the master to validate the device so that it will only accept an identical sensor. To complete the parameterization, return to the properties of the IO Link Master and deactivate the Inhibit Module checkbox. The backup and restore of parameters is active when the box is unchecked. Note that the current sensor parameters are saved together with the port configuration. This means that if the pressure sensor is replaced with an identical one, configured as default, it will automatically get the modified parameter set from the master. First, we check the master's device validation. If the correct sensor is connected, as shown here, the corresponding status LED will be solid green. Now we unplug the M12 connector, the port detects that no sensor is being read, and we can see the green light flashing. Now we plug in another sensor. If a wrong device with a different vendor or device ID is used, the master will detect this. The process values will not be read, and the status LED will change to flashing red. Only when the correct pressure sensor is reconnected will the color of the LED change back to steady green. The master will accept the wired sensor and read the process values. Let's now move on to the data storage function. As you can see, the current pressure value is displayed in green. This parameter set with a green display is stored in the IO Link master due to the backup and restore function. We will now simulate a new pressure sensor with factory settings. To do this, we connect the existing sensor to a power supply without any connection to the IO Link master or the controller and set the factory settings manually. As we can see, the sensor display is red by default. Now we connect exactly this sensor to the IO Link port of the master we have configured and see what happens. The master recognizes that it is a factory set device and overwrites the saved parameter set. When the transfer is successful, the sensor display turns green. The new pressure sensor is now parameterized in the same way as the previous device. Thank you for watching. See you next time.